theyeshiva.net. Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome. Ruchim Abayim. We'll continue. We'll continue um, on page 84. On top it says Shlach, second column, the new section, the new uh, paragraph, Vihine Ksiv. Vihine Ksiv, Ahoya Kais Shosel Al Palge Moyim. This mimer of the Balatanya began on the words at the end of Parsha Shlach, close to the end of Shlach. Vayiyu Bnei Yisrael Bamidbar, Vayim Tzuish, Mekoitzitz Eit, Mekoishesh Eitzim Beyoim Hashabbos. That the Jewish people were in the Midbar in the desert, and they discovered, they found there was a person who was Mekoishesh Eitzim on the day of Shabbos. This was a desecration of Shabbos. And it wasn't just uh, <coughs> in some person's corner years later, but it was as the Chazal say Rashi brings for Shabbos in the Midbar uh, after the Jewish people received Shabbos. So this was like a very uh, public display of the violation of Shabbos. The question is what Mekoshish Eitzim means. The words Mekoshish Eitzim are not so clear. What does the word Mekoshish Eitzim mean? Does it mean some say, so there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, the word Mekoshish is not such a clear cut term what it means in Lashon Kodesh in Hebrew. Some say he was chopping wood, chopping wood on Shabbos. Some say he was harvesting, he was cutting wood, cutting branches, creating lumber on Shabbos. Gathering wood on Shabbos, gathering, carrying wood on Shabbos. The common denominator is that it was some major violation of Shabbos, Chilul Shabbos, that was connected to the wood, to the trees. <coughs> and that's when the penalty for the violation of Shabbos was given, the death penalty of Skila. And that's what happens in the story. They didn't know what to do, and then Moshe received this instruction. The Zohar in Parsha Shlach gives a whole new interpretation that Mekoshish comes from the word Hekesh. Hekesh in Lashon Kodesh means to compare. Lahakish. In, 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 in Gemara we often have a Hekesh, which is when two things are near each other. It's called in English a juxtaposition between two things that are near each other. And you're Makish. You compare one to the other because they're in the same Pasuk in the same sentence. So he says, Mekoshish eats and means... He was being makish. He was comparing the trees. Which of the trees? The famous trees in Bereshus. You have the Eitz HaChayim and the Eitz HaDas. When Hashem created Adam and Chavi, placed them in Gan Eden, in the Garden of Eden, to work it and to protect it. And in that garden, there were many trees, but among them there was also the Eitz HaChayim Chagan, the tree of life in the garden. And the Eitz HaDas, as it's called, the tree of knowledge or awareness, tree of perception, which the Pasuk calls the Torah calls Toiv Vira, some mixture of good and not good, bad. And he tells Adam, Mikoil you should eat, you could or you should eat from all the, from all the trees of the fruit, uh, from all the fruits of the trees, but not from the Eitz Hadas, which will cause your demise. But Adam and Chava do eat from the Eitz Hadas, as we know. So the Zoyer says that years later there's this fellow in the desert who's busy comparing the trees. As he puts it, the Zoyer's Lashon that the Baltanya quotes, Hudiyik Ezim and Hain Rav. He wants to know which one is greater. Which tree is greater. So the interpretation of the is certainly very interesting, but the question is what does it mean? <laughs> and what's the connection to the literal meaning of the story? All interpretations in Torah are connected. There's some of the He's comparing trees. What was it with Shabbos? And why was he doing it? And what was wrong? And what's the problem? Right. Even a bigger question, the death penalty. So obviously the Zoya is explaining the story according to Pnimius Atayra. There's different layers in Taira, right? Even when you speak about Skila, we learned once in Amayim, I think in Shabbos Shuva, look at the Taira. There is Skila physically, Skila. In other words, everything in Torah, Torah, it says, 
The Medrash says Torah was there 2,000 years before the world was created. The Gemara says in Masechus Shabbos, in the Sukh of Matan Torah, tough, tough, almost 1,000 years before the Torah was given, before the world was created, the Torah was given. You have the Torah the way it's learned in Gan Eden, Lamaila, the Malachim wanted the Torah. What does this all mean? It means the Torah has many layers to it. There's the Torah the way it assumes a very concrete interpretation, physical interpretation, the way it's in this world. Shor Shanagach means a physical ox, gore is a physical cow. That's what it means. There's an ox with horns and it gores. And then there's the question, how much do you have to pay? Shnayim Echzebetalus means two people are fighting over a talus, a talus is a cloak, a garment, a cashmere sweater. Right? Shnaimakhsabatalus, or whatever they're fighting over. Our Ba Avis Nazikin means there's four types of damagers. And every Mishnah, every 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 sugi in halacha has a concrete interpretation. In Pnimi Satira, which means the inner the inner dimension, you can have the same story, exactly the same scenario. But the way it's understood is in a metaphysical fashion. So the same is true when it comes to skilla, when it comes to a thing like stoning. They're stoning physically, but they're stoning in a spiritual place, in a spiritual state. And that's really the shayrish of it, that's the source of it in spirituality. We once learned in Amayim and Lakuta Torah that the four penalties of Bezdin are called skilla, Sreifa, Herig, Vichenek, exist on, they're really representative of four spiritual experiences that a soul can have. Okay. So I just wanted to uh, make that clear. So what's the explanation on all of this? So for this, the Balatanya went in to discuss what the Gemara says in Yuma, that there's something called Kedusha, Adam Mekadash Atzmai, Ma'at Malmata, Mekadash Noi Seharbe Malmaila, because it says, V'yiskadishtem V'yisim Kedusha. Sanctify yourself and you'll be holy. So the Gemara says, when you sanctify yourself and you'll be holy. You sanctify yourself a little bit down here. And as a result, you will receive much sanctity from above. It says, what is this Kedusha that we're talking about? It's not just, it says in Prekiyavis, when a Jew learns Torah, the Shekhinah dwells. Even one person, certainly two people learning together. Three people, certainly five people, ten people. The Mishnah goes through all the numbers. Asar, Shayosh, and Vaiskin, but here, we're talking about a unique thing outside of the dwelling of the Shechin. So for this, the Balatanya went in to a whole other discussion, and that was just the evolution of the Maim, was what? A famous uh, contradiction that the Gemara poses in Brachas, where it says in Shema, Vasafta de Gancha You're going to, if you listen to me, and you love me with all your heart, and you do your thing, I will we say every morning, I'll give you rain. You'll, you'll gather your grain and your wine and your oil, and you'll have grass for your uh, for your livestock, for your animals, and you'll eat and you'll be satiated, etc. And that's considered great blessings of harvest and plenty and life and sustenance. Yeshaya Hanavi. This is in, in Shema, the second section of Shema, which comes from Parshish Ekev, Deuteronomy. But Yeshaya Hanavi, our prophet Yeshaya in chapter 61, speaks about Va'amdu Zarim Virod Sainam. You won't have to ga- gather your grain. Others will do it for you. So the Gemara says there's a difference between Oisin Ritzayna Shalmakam and Ein Oisin Ritzayna Shalmakam. They're fulfilling the will of God or not. This is Brachas. Gemara and Brachas, the beginning of chapter 6. On this, the Balatanya says, it seems so strange. Vasafta the Gancha is called Enois in Ritzayin Rishal Makam. They're not doing God's will. That's what they have to do with themselves. But take a look in the Pasuk. It says, Vahaya im Shamaya Tishmu al Mitzvaisai. You listen to my mitzvahs. You love me. You serve me with all your heart, with all your soul. That's called not doing the will of God. What is then doing the will? <laughs> this is really a question of the Marsha. The Marsha and the Gemara asked this question. So Balatanya answers. <laughs> And as he says, he says elsewhere, it's an answer he heard from the Magid, from his Rebbe, that there's one difference between the first parsha of Shema and the second parsha. Bechol Ma'idcha. The first one it says, Bechol Avavcha, Bechol Navshcha, Bechol Ma'idcha. The second one it says, Ola Avdoi, Bechol Avavchem, or Bechol Navshcha, not to Bechol Ma'idcha. It's the difference between Bechol Ma'idcha, 
that's lacking in the second parish of Shema that the Gemara calls Ein Oisin Ritzayin Shomak. Which means when it says do, not doing the will of God, it doesn't mean literally. Like we would understand it in a very concrete, simplified form. They're disobeying the will. It says clearly, Shamaya Tishmol Mitzvah. So you can't. The Gemara <laughs> read those Psukim. Gemara wasn't ignoring that you can listen to my mitzvahs, that I'm commanding you. And for Hoyim Shamaya Tishmol, El Kol Mitzvah. It's not like 90%, not 10%. El Kol everything. And then not only doing it like a robot, but it says, La'avas Hashem Alekechem, you love. And that's not enough. Ula'avdoi b'chol avavchem u'v'chol nafshechem. That's the, so to say that means they're rebelling against his will is un, uh, it's unattainable. It's not uh, it's not it's not an authentic way of reading it. It's just it's 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 not what it says. You have to understand that oisin ritzoyner shal and ain oisin in a much deeper way, and that has to do with the bechol moidecha. And that's what the Gemara means ain oisin ritzoyner shal and that creates the vasafta. The Gan Chavis Rosh Chavis Recha, which obviously is a great blessing that you'll have a lot of harvest and you'll gather it, but you'll gather it yourself. What's missing? What's missing is Bechol Bechol Moedach. To understand this, he says we have to understand what the Zayar says. Less Pulchena Kepulchena De Rechimusa. The Zayar says that there's no Avoida like the Avoida of love. Rechimusa means love. Rechimu in Aramaic is Ava, love. Dechilu is Yira and Rechimu is is Ava. If you'll read the Targum Unkulus, when Yemai Vesedra, whenever it says love, translation is always Rechimu. Rechimu is love. Ah, Rachimim is a word in Lashon Kodesh. Rechimu is a word in Aramaic, but the two are very close. Avoida, service. Service. If you'll read Yuxuv, it says, Vano Eflach. <laughs> I'm going to serve my wife, service my wife. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> in my ksuva status, when I read ksuvas by the chuppah status, that's <laughs> basic. But I don't know all the nuschayas. So the Zoya says. <laughs> it's Aramaic. <laughs> Most women and men don't know how to read Aramaic. <laughs> they wrote it in Aramaic because that was the language that was most common then, so they wanted everybody to understand. Like many of the things they wrote in Aramaic. So the Zoya says, less pulchina. There's no pulchina. Pulchina means avoida. There's no service like the avoida. In other words, there's many different avoidas. There's many ways how to serve God, but there's nothing like the service of love. So the Balatanya is medayik. He doesn't say less pulchina. Kepulchena birichimosa. It says, Les pulchena kepulchena dirichimosa. Which means he's not saying there's no avoidus Hashem like the avoidus done out of love. It's like you could say, you could do things with four, you could do things begrudgingly, you could do things and you feel exhausted, you could do things as though you're coerced and forced, you could do things out of fear, out of dread. So they are saying, yeah, it's all fine, but less pulchena kepulchena birichimosa. There's no avoidus like the avoidus that's done out of enthusiasm out of affection, out of ava. But the Zoya says more than that. He says, there's no avoida like the avoida of love, not the avoida with love. There is avoida Hashem, whatever avoida Hashem is. And when you do it with love, it's the best. But the Zoya is saying something else. There's no avoida like the avoida of love. In other words, the ava itself is an avoida. He's describing here different avoidas, and one of those avoidas is called the avoida of ava, the love itself. The love has a tachlis in and of itself. Las pulchina kapulchina derechimus. That itself is an avoid. The word avoida always comes from the word ibud. We have in, in the laws of Shabbos, ma'abed. The word avoida means work. That's literally what it means. An eved is somebody who's completely committed to somebody's work. Eved, that becomes his very identity because the eved, the classic slave, is owned by the master for work. Right, by, by, by in Torah and Evadivity is only for six years, but those years, those years, he's an Evid, also from the word Avoid. In Hilcha Shabbos, we have one of the Malachas of Shabbos is Ma'abed. Ma'abed is a tanner, somebody who takes uh, skin of animals, right, and develops it, for example, into leather, which you could make shoes or whatever else you're doing. 
So everybody knows it's one of, it's a very complex, it's a very, uh, toilsome and tiresome work. Ma'abit, so avoid means an avoid. It's work, it's, it's, uh, So therefore, when it says less pulchin and kapulchin of the rechimusa, it is the avoid of of ava itself, which he says is an avoid of amal gadol. To explain what this avoid is, the balatanya now went into the two forms of love, which became the main focus of that of that of the previous section of the maimer, and as you recall, we discussed it by riches and a few shiurim. Generally, he divides them into two sections, and that is this the ava. On which Moshe Rabbeinu says at the end of his life, La Avas Hashem Alekecha, why ki, who chayecha, love Hashem because he constitutes your life. It's called the Ava of Mamalek Kalalman. And then there's a second Ava, the higher Ava, the Ava rooted in Saiv of Kalalman. As explained at length what these two Avas were. And the final discussion that the first Ava can can seize consciously. The second Ava, on the other hand, could never seize because it's not rooted only in the perception and the limits of the human consciousness, as he discussed at length. But in order to feel the one, the higher one, which is like bris oilam, one has to cut and open up the arla, the foreskin, the blockages, as the Gemara says in Bracha Samach Gimel, we're going to find the butter of Torah. Only the one who's ready to spit out the milk that he nursed from Mishdayimai from his mother. That was basically the structure of what was discussed in the beginning of the Maimer in the previous classes. Continues now. The Pasik says, Vahaya ke'et shasul al palge mayim. And we have here. A pasuk in Yirmi, I'll just read you the pasuk. The pasuk says in Yirmi, "Vahaya keitz shasul al mayim." It looks like he's combining here two psukim. In the beginning of Tehillim, we say, "Ashir isha shel lehalach batzas rishayim over there chatoim l'am and the merchul letzim liyashav kiim b'seris Hashem cheftzay v'seras yagayam and v'leila." Right in the beginning of Tehillim, the third verse. For how you eight shasel, person will be like a eight shasel. As eight is a tree, shasel planted, al palge mayim. Palge mayim means uh, uh, rivulets of water. Meaning when waters, when when water, when sources of water are uh, divided into channels, right? Palge from the, ah. Bridging. Bridging. The, splitting. the splittings of water. Splitting. Right. The word plukta, the word plukta means a machloikas, when things split. Ah? Faluja in Arabic. Faluja, very good. It's called faluja from the word palge, right? In Iraq, yeah. Because the water split. We have in, in Aramaic the word plag means half, right? Plagufa, palge shali, palge shalach, half and half. So palge mayim is where the water split. So it's a tremendous blessing that the the eight shasal al palge mayim, that the trees are planted in those places where there are sources of water and the waters go in different directions, so you can have many different trees. As a result of that, the roots of the tree are always receiving the nurture and the nutrients and the vitality it needs to survive because without the water it can't survive. So vahayakei shasal al palge mayim, asher piria yitin bi'itai, the beginning of Tehillim. Its fruits it gives in the right time. And the leaves of the tree, will not uh, experience decadence, decomposition. That's in Tehillim. In, uh, in Yermia, which is another very similar Pasuk, almost identical. Oh, okay. I have it here. Yirmiya Perik Yud Zayin. Vahoyakeit Shosel Al Mayim. 
person will be like a tree planted on water. Val Yuval, Val Yuval Yishalach Sharashov. Yuval, interesting, is also like a flow, a flow of water, as he'll explain. It sends forth its roots. As you know, when a tree is planted, the roots develop under the ground, of course, and the roots are fascinating because they search for water. The, the roots themselves, and they'll go in different directions based on where the water is. As you know, trees are geniuses. And uh, <laughs> they know exactly what they need to do in order to survive, and not just survive, but survive successfully and ultimately propagate. So they devise plans. And it's very fascinating to watch because they have this wisdom that we, <laughs> we, don't, we don't got. <laughs> You can have a PhD in botany and learn it for 90 years and you still don't know somehow what that little seed knows and how uh, it, 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 it makes sure it survives. So the roots will, will spread to those places where it can get more water so the water will be able to pass through the roots and give it the chius, the vitality it needs. So he says, So he says, this tree will not be afraid when heat comes because it has its, it has its water, it has its moist. Its leaves will be vibrant. Even in a year of uh, drought, this tree is not worried. He won't stop making fruits. Yeah. This is the Pasuk in Yemi, which elaborates on the Pasuk in Tillim, but with more details, Yemi Yaperi Kitzayin Pasuk Ches. It says, What the Pasuk, the Navi, is referring to on a spiritual level is not just the physical tree, but also the tree of life. That's why Yemi says he will not be afraid when a heat comes. Pirush, what does this mean? On a literal level, it means, of course, that the tree will be able to survive even during difficult seasons because it got its water. But Pirush, so even when there's a heat, scorching heat, and even when there's a lack of rain, but nonetheless, the tree's roots have its water. On a deeper level, on a spiritual level, Pirush, Shlayivot al this level of love, the love that's rooted in the Eitz HaChayim, in the tree of life, this love is, uh, will never be bottled, it will never cease, and it will never be nifsik, it will never be interrupted. Even though there is sometimes a chayim, a scorching heat, what's the heat? The heat is passion or cravings to other things which you might think would obliterate or interrupt this Ava. Says the Balatanya, Yirmiya Navi says, no. When you have the eight Shasl, when you have the eight Sachayim, it's planted in a way that even when a person has other passions and other taivas, this Ava is never interrupted, it never ceases. An expression in Sfarim of Kabbalah that the makif, the light which is makif, which is associated with the light of soiviv, blinds the eyes of the externals. In other words, it will never be obliterated or overwhelmed by the forces of chitsoinius, of externality or superficiality in the person or in the world. Or as the Pasuk says in Shashirim, Mayim Rabim La Yuchlu Lechabes Esa'ava. Even raging storms will not be able to extinguish the love. There's a type of love that no waters in the world will extinguish it. So in that metaphor, the love is like the fire and no raging waters will extinguish the fire. That's the metaphor in Shashirim. The metaphor used in Yermaya is that even when you have scorching heat, scorching passions, taivas, to all types of things, it will not destroy. The eight shussel, al palge mayim, nothing can destroy this love. 
That's what he's explained earlier, that there's two types of the Av. av. The Av that's rooted in Mamalik Halalman is the Av that's essentially rooted in the love of self, the love of the ultimate self, the love of the truest self, the love of the self, the way it's a reflection of the divine energy. By definition, that is that which the person experiences, which the person feels. That's what makes it here. That's what makes it me, that I'm aware of it. And as we know, the great, even very intense love could be interrupted by a lot of other stuff. There's other loves that come into the world. There are substitutes. There are distractions. There are a lot of qualities or characteristics, certainly addictions, taivas, that can blot it out or certainly eclipse it and eliminate it. There's another Ava that's rooted in not La'ava Hashem Alakecha Kehu Chayach, but Ava that's rooted in Soiv of Kalam. What's Soiv of Kalam? Soiv of is not the way the divine is condensed to become the engine of the universe or to become the engine of I. But it's what he puts, as he puts it. It's the essence. <coughs> and that love could never be affected or transformed from any other love. Because when the love is defined by the vessel that experiences it, the vessel <coughs> can be filled with other things. But because it's beyond the keli, that's why he calls it chema shal the butter that floats over the milk. Chema shal the shamnunis, the fat that's above the milk. It, since it's above the keli, so therefore it's an oiz bris oilam, it could never be obliterated. It's eternal, it's timeless. There's nothing one can do to cancel it, to change it. It's not defined by my consciousness of it. On the contrary. So that's why he says, Lo he's not afraid of any chaim, no taiva in the world could cancel it. He makes it, the Pasik says in Eoiv, Im yasim a love libai, ruchai v'nishmasai a love yasif. This is interesting. How the the, the literal taich and how the Alter Rebbe taiches it. The literal taiches it's in Eiv Lamadalad. In Job thirty four, Lamadalad Yud Dalad thirty four fourteen. Im yasim a love libai libai ruchai v'nishmasai a love yasif. The literal interpretation is. Eiv's friends are chastising him for all of his words. Eiv claimed that he was innocent and he was, he didn't know why he was suffering all these uh, tragedies in his life. Rahman al the death of his children and poverty and illness. And he had boils and leprosy. He had a vitzada in the world. And, uh, and they came and they said, you know, there's a reason this happened, this happened. And Eiv was, was maintaining his innocence. It goes on for like 37 chapters, the arguments back and forth until finally God mixes in to the debate. And he says, Eo's friends don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> I'm laughing. It's not a funny book. I'm just laughing because the friends are very self-righteous. And God says that uh, they need to bring uh, carbon to uh, atone for what they said. Even though they were basically saying that Eev is wrong and Hashem is obviously right and he's suffering for a reason and Eev said there's no reason, I can't find any reason, etc. So one of the expressions they tell Eev is very powerful. Im may love lib, I'm just saying the literal interpretation and the mafarshim there, the mitzudas and uh, mitzudas David, mitzudas Si and Rashi. Im may love libay. If God, uh, the malbim, im may love if God places his heart Toward the world or towards a person, immediately he can gather back. He can he can retrieve the person's spirit and the person's nasham. In other words, the whole the whole world is basically uh, from God. So Yasim may love Liba if he puts his heart to it, or if you want to use these words, if God decides to inhale instead of exhale. So what happens? The ruach and the neshama of a person or of the world goes back. It's not like it's a whole drama. The whole world is basically because he wants it to be. And if he puts his heart to it, he takes back the ruach and the neshama. Palatanya teaches on a deeper level, he says as follows. 
One is talking about a person, and one is talking about Hashem. Pirush, kashay yasim ha'adam el liboy. Im yasim a love liboy, talking about the person. Kashay yasim ha'adam el liboy. There's an expression in Hebrew called sima slave. When you place your heart on something, meaning you focus on something. It's called sima slave, ah? Huh? Attention, yeah. You have it in modern Hebrew also, yes. Simat lev. means to focus on something. To direct your heart into a certain place. When a person will have sima slave, when a person will focus his heart. If you could just put your cell phones on vibrate, please. The person will delve in to this tremendous love. With a great shuka kamasha kasavel ishik chukasaikh, as the past success by Adam and Chava. Your craving will be to your husband. Vel ishik chukasaikh. Then Oz a love is barakh. Yes, so viyam shikh lamata toisfus kadush. Im yasame love liboy. If a person puts his heart to Hashem, what's the result? Rucha vinishmase a love yes. Ruchvi Nishma say, love Yasef means there's a reciprocal response from above. What we do here below is responded from above. That Hashem will lift up, will gather in his Ruach and the Neshama. In other words, when you do it, a love, a love is Baruch, so Yasef, he will gather up and bring down to the person an increase in holiness. That's what the Gemara means. Adam Ma'at person sanctifies himself a little bit and he receives from above tremendous gedusha. Pidush, she'en ne'el ma'at. Why is it called ma'at? Because it's a little, k'may shamer razal, the Gemara says, nidme lehem kahar. The Gemara says, al asid lavoi, the tzaddikim are going to look at the Yitzhahara. Right. <coughs> so it could be nidme lehem. <coughs> nidme lehem kahar. Appear like a mountain. Appear. How did we conquer? How did we conquer such a mountain? And others, it's gonna appear like it's gonna appear like a uh, uh, like a, a strand over here. Like <laughs> I couldn't overcome a strand over here. So nidmalaham kahar. That's why we call it maat. Avol beemes enekain. Really, it's not a har. It's nidmalaham kahar. That's why we call it maat. Sometimes a person has to overcome something. In your mind, you're climbing Mount Everest. Because that's that's the kayak of the Yitzhahara. That's how it has power. If it if he tells you that I'm not nothing, I'm a little uh, I'm a garnish, to, so how could you overpower me? It looks like a big mountain. How could you reach the top of this mountain? How could you defeat this mountain? It's Nidmalahem Kar. But when you do it, you realize it was garnished. So it's all perspective. That's why it's called Ma'at. From the person's experience, it may not be Ma'at, it's a lot. But from the ultimate perspective, it's ma'at. It's like, you know, sometimes in different stages of life, what was so difficult at one stage, at another stage is garnished. But from my perspective, it's a mountain. To make this call is a mountain. You tell it to somebody that doesn't know what you're talking about, what's the big deal? Just say it to the person. But it's akol of yam avayish, mam is bayish, right? Some conversations for one person is not a big deal. For the other person, it's the most scary thing in the world. And we all have those, uh, you know, those... Uh, Tipping points, the tipping points, where for somebody else it's not a big deal, but for me or for you, and based on your circumstances, your condition, your nature, your past, Nidmalam Kahar, is it really a mountain? So Nishta's a mountain, it's not a big deal. That guy you want to talk to is more scared than you. <laughs> He's more insecure than you, don't worry. But from my perspective, it's a mountain. After death. After death. After dentist, okay. Wie weißt du? Du weißt nicht. Du weißt nicht. Ah? A dentist? He means before they had the the Novocaine. Yeah, in the olden days, ah, huh? you were still zeichet to go to such a dentist. No. Huh? In Russland, yeah, Nishnabam dentist, Alamal. 
But <laughs> that's why the Russians drink. God, they used to give four-year-olds vodka for the dentist. <laughs> yeah. Huh? I once saw somebody wrote, I guess he was a comedian, so he wrote that, uh, that uh, for many people, the fear of public speaking is stronger than the fear of death, which means that in any situation, at the funeral, they would rather be in the coffin than giving the eulogy. Okay. So how accurate that is, I'm not sure. But the point is, kahar. sometimes people, people, things look like a mountain, insurmountable challenge. Not true. They would rather be. <laughs> People listening. Huh? You're saying they're happy for him that he doesn't have to hear the shtusa. <laughs> really, it's not a heart. That's why the Gemara says, Ma'at. Mekadesh atzmai ma'at doesn't mean it's so little. It's not so little. It could be pretty big. For the person, it's big. Relative to everything, it's called ma'at. What this creates is a kedusha that's tremendous on a real harbe, not only in perception. Real harbe, a tremendous flow of holiness above. Shamamshech, a love, chines seiv of kalalman. What's the harbe? The ultimate harbe is seiv of kalalman. Ayidei hatayravam mitzvus tu tayra mitzvus sham mitzvus imevadam the malk. The Zoyer says that mitzvahs are called the limbs of the king. The organs of the king, the Zoyer says that we have 248 organs, Evarim, Ramach Evarim. The 248 mitzvahs are Hashem's Evarim. Every human organism has its 248 Evarim limbs. The divine Kivayachal also has. Adam Elian also has 248. What are those? So Zoyer says those are the mitzvahs. What's the marshal? What's the Zoyer trying to say? If you grab one a person by one of his limbs, you could draw him to you. Not just that limb, the whole person. You grab a person by his arm, by his foot, whatever you, by his head, you draw him to you through that limb. Certainly when you grab him by his right hand, so when these people say that the mitzvahs are called Evarim the Malka, it's not stamen expression, it's the limbs of the king. It means that through each one, you can, so to speak, draw him down, draw him to you. When you chap on an aver, an aver is not just a piece of meat. It has within it the person. And when it's connected to the entire organism, so when you draw that to you, you draw the entire body to you. So that's what he says through a mitzvah. Yam shichenuei love, certainly the right arm, which mitzvah is connected to the right arm, that's daka of a chesed. The Zoya says chesed, droya yimina. Chesed is the right arm, kevayachal of Hashem. So when a Jew gives tzedaka, and not just giving tzedaka, what they're doing is they're holding on, they're grasping the energy, the divine right arm, so to speak, metaphorically speaking, through this mitzvah. She's born in native when a person meditates well. Shatoid of Amitsusim and Chinus save of Kalam. Vatsmusi is Barach Mamma Shaykh and Besaycham. The Toyd Amitsvis are rooted what's called Save of Kalam. That's the divine energy that transcends all of the universes. It's not the energy that was condensed to become the engine of the world that's rooted in himself. And Vatsmusi is Barach Mamma Shaykh and Bam. The essence itself dwells in them. So when a person is involved in and he absorbs in his brain, physical brain, or does it with his hand, whether it's a or whatever the mitzvah is, so he draws down on himself. There's a relationship with the light of infinity, blessed be he, in his essence, mamish. We explain Mamala Kalalman represents the Bruach Piv, the Dvar Hashem, the energy that is condensed in order to become an engine for the universe. It fills the world. It becomes the eye. And that's one type of Av. That's the Av Hashem. That's what? That's rooted in the love of the self and the love of the world. The Av of Saiv of Kalalman, as explained, is that which the Atmos, the essence, which transcends 
the chiyus that is condensed into the world. That Torah and mitzvahs is rooted in Sev of Kalalman. So Adam Mekadesh Atzmai Ma'at. When a person works on himself a little bit to sanctify himself down here a little bit, what's the result? Mekachin Noisei Harbe Milmaila. That which is Milmaila above, which is Harbe, which is the Sev of Kalalman. Just like when I pull the limb, I don't only have a limb, but I have the whole the whole organism of the person. <laughs> It only sounds like a little. It's 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 by a person it may sound a lot, but sometimes for a person to sanctify themselves a little bit in this world, for them it's not a little bit, it's a lot. We're calling it ma'at because it's nidmalaham kahar. The Gemara says, Adam Mekadesh Asatz Ma'at Mekachin I say Harbe Melmaila. What does he say? Sounds to him like a little, but the effects are big. Is that what he's saying? Why would he say ma'at? Why not harbe? Because you don't have to do harbe, you have to do ma'at. But when you say ma'at, ma'at doesn't mean that it's always easy. It looks like a lot, but it's really ma'at. No. Not the marshal used for this? That what? Like you do a little here, and that's the ah. effect upstairs. Mm. Mm. It sounds like it's drawing a little better shine. Hey, you talk about Mitzvah Torah. Someone does a Mitzvah here, it may have effects. Yeah, yeah. Mekachna is how I'm on my layer. Yeah. Vizel, Val Yuval, Yishalach Sharoshov. And that's why the Pasa continues that the tree sends its roots. Al Yuval Yishalash literally it means on water that flows. It sends forth its roots. Shobchinis Yuval Bechilam the Yuval Bemalapum. Ushnayam Lashan Hilacha. There's Yoival and there's Yuval. Yoival is with a chilam, right? Yoival, the Vav is a chilam. Yuval, like we have the year of Yoival, the Jubilee year. The Pasuk in Yerba says, Al Yuval is with Malapam. Malapam is a uh, Yu, is a Shuruk. Ushneim Lashen Hailacha, both mean to lead. Kamesha Kasav, the Pasuk says in Tehillim, Lachayay Vilu Malachim Shai. The kings will bring to you, Hailacha, they will be Malach to you, they will bring to you a Shai, a gift. Ella, Shabchin is Yoval be Malapam, Ritzayin Eloimar, Shahu Yiz Barach Misnaigam, Mismashach Lamata, they are Tayyid of Amitzvah. Yuval b'malapum, there's Yoval and there's Yuval. Yuval is that Hashem is misnayeg, is led, and brought down Lamata through Torah and Mitzvahs. V'yoval b'choylem, shomaneg umam shech oisonu l'maylam. Yuval is that he is brought down, downwards, as he explained through Torah and Mitzvahs, that's Yuval. V'yoval b'choylem is Yoval, not Yuval, not he's brought down, but he, he brings us up. Yoival, he brings us up. He's manig amam shechis on alamay lekamay shekasov. Yoival, he. The 50th year is called Yoival, tia lechem, pidush, shalachem tia oisei ha Yoival. This Yoival should be yours. What's the chidush of my lechamam shech v'shavtem ishlach uzasai? That he brings you up and he brings back every person back to his ancestral homeland, which is what happened by Yoival, le skalal to be absorbed in your ultimate source, le mevi echad be echad. To become one with one, nishikin kfulim, a double kiss. So there's Yuval and there's Yoival. Al Yuval, Yeshalach Sharashov means that this eats Chayim's roots. This Ava is brought down, it's Yuval, it's led downward into the person's life. As we say, Ada Mekachin, Atzmoy Ma'at, Mekachin Oisoy, Harbe Melmaila. Then there is Yoival, he brings you up Lamaila, Yoival, not Yuval, not he's led down, but he leads you up. That's the difference of Yoival with a Chaylam and Yuval. With a Malapum, he brings <coughs> the person up back to its source, Lameve Echad Be'echad. So you have the double kiss, both from above and from, and from below. There's now a parenthesis with a lot of references. In Kabbalah, but let's go here to the Mekoshish. If you go to the next uh, next page, Mem Gimel, column one, three lines from the top, the last word. 
והנה מזה יובן עניין חטא מקוש השצם ביום השבס. From this we'll understand the story of the מקוש השצם on שבס. כי הנה... שבס דה לילה הוא בחינס עליאס הבירורים. Shabbos of the Leila is Friday night, the Shabbos of night, is Aliyah Sabirurim. Aliyah Sabirurim means the ascent that comes from Birurim. What's Pshat? Shenis Bariru Bechol Sheish Yisimei Hamais. The Birurim that were, Birurim means sifting out, clarifying, selecting, that were done throughout the six days of work. V'upchin is Birur Eit Sadaas Taivira. That's the birur of Eitz Adas. It's the selecting of the tree of knowledge, which is good and evil. The good is separated from the Rava. Oila lemailan goes up and connects to the tree of life, where there's no Ra. And that's why the main Ava, Ava Rabba, not Avas Oilam, Ava Rabba, the two loves are called Avas Oilam is Shabbos. Vihine Eitz Achayim Zalpchin is Shabbos of the Yoyma. The tree of life is the day of Shabbos. There's the night of Shabbos, the day of Shabbos. The night of Shabbos is the Shabbos that is created from the six days of the week. What creates the Shabbos of the six days of the week? Avayda Sabiruru. What creates the Shabbos day of Shabbos? That's the tree of life, Avarabah. And then from there afterwards you can have the roots that are sent forth to the Yoivel. That's the third meal of Shabbos. What's called Shabbos, Shabbos, the Shabbos within Shabbos, the, the Mincha, I said Menucha, Mincha of Shabbos, which is Eis Rotsen, a special time. This Friday night, the Shabbos day, and then the Shabbos afternoon. Three different experiences. Shabbos night is the Shabbos that comes from the Eitz Adas, from the Bidur of the Eitz Adas, when the Toiv goes up and connects to the source of Toiv. The Shabbos day, which is rooted in Eitz Achayim, which is the Aver and then there's, then there's the third Indian that's even higher than the Eitz Achayim, Dal Yuval Yishalach Sharoshov, the Yoival, which is even deeper than the Eitzachayim. What does it mean it's deeper than the Eitzachayim? <laughs> if you go back for a moment in the brackets that I skipped, the brackets from the previous page, it's just I want to read one. It says, Vihine Yoival Ushnasa Chamishim, Dainu Shara Chamishim, Minun Shari Bina. Yoivel is the 50th portal from the Nunshah. Vezel Inyan, Shapirish Yoivel, Shomana Gamam Shechesonu Lamaila. He brings us up. Kameshakos Makamachal Apostle Gusfartem Lachem, Tispiru Chamishim Yoim. There's the 49 days of Sphere, and then there's the 50th day. Shashara Chamishim, who am a Chaber Amatz, Lain Sayyid Baruchul and Natsalam. The 50th gate connects the infinite to the Natsalam Tatsilus. So he says, Al Vahoya Kate Shossel, Val Yuval Yishalach Sharashim Shabchinus Yevil and Maila Gamma Bchinus Eitzachayim. There's the Eitzchayim, and then there's something even deeper that Eitzchayim reaches Yevil. And after all those footnotes, he says, "Yuvan zavim ashakasu bezoya parsha shlach hayesh ba eitzim oyin shabchinus oyin ula mila mila gam abchinus eitzachayim." When Moshe says, "Find out if Eretz Yisrael has an eitz or oyin," says, "Does it have eitzachayim, or maybe it's rooted even beyond the eitzachayim in ayin?" V'shara chamishim abchinus yevulu amemutza ben ayin liyash. The eitzachayim is already the intermediate between ayin and yesh. Ayin is higher than eitzachayim. We say in the Akedah, he took Yitzchak, right? They came to the mountain. What's the Lashon over there? Yeah? He bound Yitzchak higher than the Eitzim. Which Eitzim? Eitz Adas and Eitz Achayim. So from this we'll understand the Mekosh Eitzim. This Friday night, this Shabbos day and this Shabbos afternoon. Friday night is 
Eitz Hadas, coming up from Eitz Hadas. The Birurim, the end of the Birurim. Shabbos day is Eitz Achayim, calls it Averaba. And then there's Shalosh Shudas Mincha. The Chet HaMekoshesh, what's the Chet HaMekoshesh? Hainu Sha'oikir Dover Megiduloi. The way many Mepharshim explain, he harvested trees. Mekoshesh was, he harvested. What's, what's, what's the problem of harvesting on Shabbos? You uproot something from its natural growth. Hainu, Shemafrid Hayesh Lies Nifrid Bifneyatsma. What's Pshat harvesting? You have a branch. You cut it. You have a fruit. You harvest it. Grain, you harvest. What are you doing? You're separating something from its source. What does this mean spiritually? You take a yesh and you separate it. It should become nifrit b'fnatsme. Pepchin is dover nifrit, separate. It shouldn't be any more nullified in the source that gives it life. That's what Mekoshish is. He disconnects the yesh from the ayin. He disconnects the yesh from its source. That's what harvesting is. When it's in its source, it's living off it. It's part of it. He disconnects it, he separates it. Now, if you do it a whole week, it's not a problem. You're supposed to harvest during the week. If not, you're not going to have any fruits or grain. The problem is not that you harvest. The problem is it was Shabbos. On Shabbos, the Eitz Hadas and the Eitz Hachayim are synthesized. Shayesh bottle. On Shabbos, the Yesh is bottle. Ali Yisraelimus. The worlds go up back to their source. Lachain ha'oiker davar migiduloi on Shabbos when you uproot something from its natural growth place. Shulias yesh b'fnayatzmoi, the yesh becomes independent. Heipecha bittel b'mekayre, contrary to the bittel in the source, who chayev chuli. Basically, he doesn't want to finish it. He says chuli. It's a death sentence. It's a death sentence on the world. So it's a death sentence on the person. Ki aydeis a poigim be'etzim anal etz adas be'etzachayev. It blemishes, it, it, it's detrimental for all these trees, the Eitzadas and the Eitzachayim. No, this needs a lot of Hasber here. It's a lot going on. I'm getting out of it that the um, um, he took away, he did do Shabbos. Shabbos gives a lot of light. And he broke the source of light. He made it separate. Yeah. We'll continue tomorrow. Blinander. Bezer Hashem. I'm still stuck on what he's saying. Pedal Shaina Elamah. I can't read that line. Who the Makash? Makash Hatsum Mahar. Makash Noy Sahar Bim El Maila. So we said Pedal Shaina Elamah. Is that on the person? Yeah. Thinks it's a little? No, he thinks it's a lot. But it's a bit of a little translation. A person sanctifies himself a little bit. Well, it should be a tremendous kedusha from above. Yeah. So he says ma'at doesn't mean ma'at that the person necessarily feels it's nothing, it's very little. Like I gave you 10 cents for tzedakah and everything. For the person, it may be. Mm-hmm. From the person's perspective. The ma'at that we call ma'at could be a tremendous effect. That the Gemara says, but what he's touching is that the ma'at can, from the person's perspective could be a tremendous effort. It's still called ma'at. Yeah, because for him, what, he, what is really ma'at for him is a mountain. Nidma lahem kahar. Trying to figure out this puts a bigger burden on the person or not. They're both. So That's why it has such an effect. Nidmalahem kahar, because you just conquered a mountain. In other words, Hashem looks at it from the person's perspective. If from your perspective it would be only ma'at, so fine, so you get ma'at. But since for the person it wasn't ma'at, it was tremendous. So God responds to that. 
In other words, he treats it like Yitaka climbed Mount Everest in terms of results. So when I learned that For me to go out of this comfort zone, yeah, objectively, it's not a big deal. It's just a few steps. But for me, those few steps is Nidmalam Kahar. It looks like going up a mountain, scaling the top of a mountain. So Mekachinus Abmel Mila, that's the response from above, not to what happened, but to your perception of what happened. You understand? How hard it was. That's yeah. Hard. It's like, yeah. You could say the guy did nothing. What's the big deal? Was no. So he's saying, so it's called Ma'at because Mitzad the Dimyan of a person, it's not ma'at. It's called ma'at. Objectively, when you look at it, you'll say, for this little kedusha, After learning the Balatang, you have to put in more effort. The person can't get away with saying, I did a little, let now let Hashem come to me. Yeah, he's saying, the Gemara in a little way. Before, in other words, the reason it's harbe mel is because the harbe is a reflection of what the person did from his own perspective. So we only use the word, word ma'at because he's standing on the mountain. Yeah. That's what he said. When you're in outer space, yeah, how much did the person climb? Yeah. <laughs> It says Mitzad the Emes. Right. Mitzad the Emes. Ultimate Emes. That's what the Gemara says. Tzaddikim nidmalam kahar. And Rishayim nidmalam kichot asayra. So the Gemara is going to look at it. Wow, look what we did. Rishayim is going to look what the Yitzhahara was a little here. You couldn't, you, couldn't fight a, you couldn't fight a strand of hair. And who's right? They're both right. That's a perspective. The one who, who was succeeded, yeah? God says, oh, you succeeded. It's a mountain, Taka. <laughs> you just climbed the top of the mountain. It's a mountain, yeah. The one who failed, yeah, what's the, it looks, what, what, yeah, chut aside and you failed. You get it? It's a very deep idea. It's not, uh, it's not about objective. That's the point. It's about the human experience of it. That's really what matters. That's why Mekachino is a hybrid milmaila. It's not stamas gula. You did a little bit, I'll do the rest. You're a little bit is already the harbe from your experience. For taste. Thank you, Rusha. Thanks. Fear is false evidence appearing real. Okay. False evidence appearing real. Very good. Fear. Why is fear such a big thing, right? False evidence appearing real. Nidmulam Kahar. Yeah. As long as a person could live their whole life in this nidma. I have this, this experiment with the, the, the elephant with the chain, no? Oh? Yeah. When they're babies. They think that they're chained. Right. And even as big elephants, they can't get out of it. An elephant's a baby. But a steak can be grabbed. The baby cannot use it. This is the brocha that I got from the Kazakhstan. I started learning chassidus, and I started a couple of years ago. Wow! And this is what I ask for a brocha. The Shliach Sanvid is that uh, I have to stop learning students I've been learning students since I'm not other other. Beautiful. Beautiful. You wanted to ask something? Yeah, I wanted to ask a question. There's two opposite matters in the shtick that we learned today. Why is it called one? Does the water represent? The main rabbi of the youth of the Sa'aba, the water represents oh. the strength of the tree. The heat and the cold. So who's good and who's bad? Right. So it's a good question. The answer is that uh, when you speak about fire, there's two types of fires, right? The fire that cooks and heats up, and there's a fire that burns. Yeah, there's a fire that's destructive, and there's the fire that creates the passion of life. Person has a fire, there's passion. Person has addiction, there's also fire, but it's completely destructive. Whenever a person is overtaken by a tremendous taiva, there's a fire in the sense that there's a, a thirst and a yin, right? Yeah, but so the question is where the fire is going. So that's why the Apostle says, 
even when you have the raging waters of life, this is not the waters that nurture a tree. It's tsunamis, tsunamis, storms, crazy hurricanes, avalanches that can destroy things. They're not, they're not good for the trees because they're too powerful. They're not measured. Like a marble, yeah. So Mayim Rabbim Yuchul Chabazava or Nahoris La Yushtafu, the Pasuk continues. Rivers will not drown it. That's one aspect. Then there's the other aspect. La Yira Kiyave Chaim. When there's a scorching heat, a scorching fire, like forest fires or these types of fires, or just Chaim, just a drought, a heat, a, you know, a heat wave, and there's no water, there's no rain. So then the, the trees are thirsty, you know, the in the deserts, the trees are thirsty. Right, right, right. You need the water to be proportionate. If not, it destroys the trees, even though trees love water. On the other hand, there's the heat. There can also be, you, you, you want heat, etc. Most has to be proportionate. And when you have an intense drought or heat, it means that the person is overtaken by all types of heat, all types of passions. This tree will survive it. So that's the idea of this tree. That's the Eitz HaChayim in the person versus the Eitz HaDaz. Are you going to be here tomorrow? Because okay. we have to explain. It was more uh, a little abstract. Both, both. There's what happens automatically and then there's the avoid in the person, like always. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bli Neda tomorrow will explore this. Well, Friday night, Shabbos day, Shabbos. It's, it's a whole... I just wanted to learn it inside, but it has to be explained. You understand? You understand? My struggle was, if I learned the Gemara before I opened the Balatanya, I would tell my child, I would tell myself, you just do a little bit. See? Invest 10% of the return is 100%. So when he said Perish Aina I didn't know if my investment has to now become twenty percent or five percent. No, he's just explaining the oymek of the Maima Chazal. Why taka mekachna sabim al Maila? Why taka? Because Hashem doesn't look at it the way it's objective from heaven's point of view. He looks at it the way it's subjective from the human point of view. That's what he's trying to say. So it's a very empowering idea. You, know, you say, yeah, but it's nothing. It's not nothing. Yeah, maybe it's nothing. If you lived in heaven, it's nothing. You know what I mean? People say, who cares? Does somebody care? <laughs> this, this shir, that shir. For, for the, this person under these circumstances, it was everything. It wasn't nothing. It's ma'at. It's not so ma'at. Yeah, really, it's ma'at. Be'emes, be'emes, it's ma'at. But it's not so ma'at. Putting in filling is not such a big effort, but it is. And the same is in every, every person's life, what their, uh, you know, the tipping point. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.